Hi, Danielle here with Scrapbook Maven. I'm really excited because I've made the Graphic 45 finals for their design team and this is my final sub submission and so I was um, given the task as well as the other finalists to make three different projects that represent my style and uh, I had the option of making a tutorial. Um, so I decided to, I'd do both, three projects and a little tutorial um, and I'll get to that at, towards the end of the video. But um, I made three different projects um, to represent the, I guess, the life of my um, paper crafting um, adventure, I guess. And so I got into paper crafting with card making to begin with. And so I made a card using the Graphic 45 Once Upon a Springtime collection. And this was the first paper collection that um, caught my eye when I began paper crafting. I had just had my daughter, so I was looking at all things girly and fairy, and this just was perfect. And it, to this day, it remains my favorite paper collection of all time. Um, and so I made this card. I did a shabby chic-ish card. I gessoed it up. I added some embossing fr frontage. Um, and I used gesso for this book plate to cover it up, added some glitter, cut this beautiful fairy out and added some glitter to her wings here, added some gesso to these beautiful flowers and then distressed all the paper edges here and added some twine that I also applied some gesso on. So that is my card representing um, how I started in paper crafting. I still love making cards and um, they're, they're a great way to make something quick and fast and you get the, um, the feeling of accomplishment quickly because you can make one in, in just a little while, which is really nice. And mo as most people know me on YouTube for my mini albums, and so I've used my second favorite collection, um, ABC Primer, and it was just fantastic that they came out with both of these collections as um, deluxe editions at the same time I was just over the moon so I got to get my hands on it because when I originally found this um, collection all I could get was an 8x8 and so to get a 12x12 with all the chipboard pieces is amazing and I'm gonna have so much fun playing with it some more and so anyways I used the ABC primer from my mini album and I am going to do a tutorial on the pocket page later so um, keep watching the video if you're interested in, in the um, construction of my pages. So for the cover, I use a chipboard piece. This is a little um, piece to put a photo in. And then I have the ABC banner here popped up on foam dimensionals. Another chipboard piece with some ribbon. And then all this is, is popped up as well to give it some dimension and interest. So for the inside, there's enough pages here if you're counting the inside covers for 13 um, grade, so kindergarten through 12, uh, 12th grade. Um, so it'd be perfect to put little photos as, of, as your child grows in this um, mini album. I added a pocket here and a chipboard piece so you can add a nice size photo here and then some journaling. And then this is a chipboard piece that I used to hold my flap down and it flips up here. Put it at a uh, slight angle to make it look a little jaunty, I guess. And then this has a little pocket up top for a little tag, another photo, or a journaling spot on the back, like that. And then this, all these large tabs represent another page or a page insert. And then these little tabs are for my tags. I just wanna go let you know real quick which dies I'm using. They are Kaiser Craft tabs and bracket dies. These are my new favorite and um, so I use them throughout the mini album and so flip this page open I've magnetized them all and you have the little jumping rope girl a little photo spot here or a journaling spot um, some of those photo corners from the cardstock stickers that you get in the uh, deluxe collection and another little sticker with a little cutout here and then we have a little photo insert here for um, more photos and then this flips over and then this flips back like that 
And then we have another little tag here and in the pocket here. So you have plenty of room for a nice size photo here and then you can add all sorts of fun stuff in the pocket. And then flip it over again and then I have this really busy page but I love it. It's like a little collage in their pockets. So this uh, Mother Goose um, cut out here holds this little booklet for more photos. Really cute cutouts in this collection. I, all the Graphic Work Vibe collections have amazing cutouts. And then this little library book card here for some journaling. And then for this little piece here, I tried to give it some dimension. I don't know if you can see. I like um, wrinkled it up a bit. And then um, because this says Mother Goose, I thought I'd um, coordinate it here with this cute cutout. And I cut it so that it flips up and we have room for multiple photos here. And then this next page here, lots of different cutouts to make a fun layout for a nice photo. Little tag here for some journaling. And then we have a pocket here, cut out these little books. And then another little tag for a photo. Nice room for a photo here as well. And then we have another insert for lots of photos. And then another little pocket here with a tag for journaling or photo. And this left plane, nice large photo space. Then we flip it over here and we have a little mother's storybook. So it flips open and you have room for more photos. And let me grab a tag real quick. So this back is left open so you can add more things in the back. And then this page here, another chipboard piece to hold my flap closed and it folds down like this so you can get a couple more photos in there. And then this layout here, we have the ruler um, cut out. I love it using it as a belly band here in the corner. And then another chipboard piece with some ribbon. And this will hold a little tag or you can stick your photo behind there so you can get a nice large photo and then have just a little corner decoration. A cardstock sticker uh, photo corner here, another cardstock sticker. Uh, left it up so you can insert your photo right here. Uh, another insert for larger photos. And then this flips over for another pocket with a little tag for photos or journaling. And then matchy matchy. Um, I just I like everything to coordinate and uh, so we have another chipboard here. This is like a playtime layout here. One, two, buckle my shoe. Uh, really cute papers. And then it flips over here so we have another one of those square cutouts from the collection and I cut it so it flips up for more photos. And then we have this page here with another chipboard piece, some cutouts to um, act as borders. And then this flips open for my letter, le letter page layout here, all the ABCs alphabets. Um, with another little booklet, these little cutouts are just so adorable. And then you can add photos there. And then another insert for larger your larger photos. And then it flips over again. So we have a little jump rope girl here. I spelled out jump. Another little tag, it's a report card. And, and uh, so as an example, you can slide your photo under here um, and have a nice little decorative edge to it. And then for our last set of pages here, we have another cute cutout that it flips open. So you can get a couple photos here and then room for your tag in the back. So you get another photo or a journaling spot. And then I made this little border around here and mimicked it over here with the larger alphabet border. And then another little chipboard piece with the alphabet blocks and some ribbon. So that is my mini album. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll show you how I made these base pages in just a minute. I just want to show you my very last project for this final submission. And this is representing where um, I'm hoping to go. Uh, create more of these um, off the page projects 
Um, this is a recipe box I made from scratch and I made it to look like a little retro um, stove or oven or what have you. So it opens up like this and um, all, I use the cutouts as my little dividers. Oh, here's some of the ephemera cards, which are perfect because they're four by six and they fit beautifully in my box. My box measures um, five inches high, five inches deep, and then six and three quarters long. So it's a great, nice size um, box that holds lots of um, recipes. Use the vegetable paper for my liner down here at the bottom and then the picnic table type um, paper for everywhere else. And then I'm more of a baker than a cook and so I love this lady um, baking a pie and the little boy watching his grandma make it. So cute. Um, cut out um, some of the images to make my little um, border here and happiness is homemade. So for the top here I cut out some more of the paper for my burners and then for this top here um, my stove knobs are chipboard pieces from the ABC Primer collection and then I have my little clock here from the collection ABC Primer collection as well. So I love this Home Sweet Home collection. It's, it's perfect for the recipe box and um, so this is a cute little handle. I thought it looked really retro and it actually opens like this. And so um, farm fresh little cutout here, which was really cute. And a little space here for a photo or a little message if you're giving this away to um, a friend. I have a friend who loves this recipe box and she's either gonna uh, make one or I'm gonna give her this one. Um, and so I'll write a little note if I give it to her. Um, but I really love this myself and I'm hoping to use it for myself. And since I'm super practical, I created this little stove top and I had to make use of this empty space. And so what I've done is I've added a little hidden opening and inside I use, pull on my little wooden spoon here and I have a little pen covered in of the Home Sweet Home paper. And so I know how I am with recipes. Sometimes I add things and I change the recipe and it's always nice to have a pen on hand to mark down and make notes on your recipes. So you'll always have a pen on hand with your little recipe box in this little compartment. And then it just closes again like that. And then we have our side here. Um, and I put the little country gentleman on there as an ode to my husband because he does make breakfast on the weekends and so that's um, for him and then this side is, has the lady with the flowers and then it's really heavy with all the index cards in there so I'm going to take those out real quick and then the back here is this cute little um, he rules the roost but I rule the rooster and then just for an added touch and for practical purposes I added these little knobs for feet. And I thought if I'm gonna have this re recipe box that I spent all this time making um, on my counter, I know how I am, I like to, I don't like to spill, but I do spill things. And um, with the little feet, it's gonna be up above any messes. And uh, then I can just wipe up my mess really easily and it won't ruin my box because um, it'll be up above the, the fray. So that is my recipe box that I made. And I just wanna quickly share these ephemera cards are fabulous because um, they, you can add your little recipe on the back. And then these burners are popped up on foam dimensionals. So you can just rest it here like that. And it's hard to show you from up above, but um, rest like that so you can look at your recipe as you're cooking. And also with this magnetized stove here if you have two parts to your recipe that'll also hold it um, like that so obviously the lid won't open because it won't be sideways but um multiple places to hold your recipes and it's a really cute recipe box that i'll be proud to, dis to display on my countertop so that those are my three projects 
my little recipe box and my card and my mini album. And so now I'm going to share with you how I constructed this, um, this page, these page chunks, I guess you could call it. Okay, so I'll move these all out of the way and share um, the tutorial. Okay, for the tutorial, you're gonna need a piece of cardstock that measures 12 by 12 inches. And um, you're gonna need one for each page that you wanna make. My mini album was four pages, so I used four pieces of 12 by 12, and then some extras for um, the hinges and such that I'll go over with you. And um, so what you need is a scoreboard and a paper trimmer. If you don't have those, it's not a big deal. This is so simple. You can just um, do without a, um, a scoreboard and I'll show you how. I've already pre-folded it, but um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna score at six inches, you're gonna rotate it and score down again. So all you're essentially doing is you're folding the paper in half. That's why you don't really need your scoreboard, but um, to get a nice clean fold, it's always nice to have a scoreboard, and then fold it again on the other side, and so you have four quadrants. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut down one of these um, score lines. So I'm gonna use my paper trimmer. You can just use your scissors if you want. And I'm just gonna cut down to the middle there. Okay? And so then you have your paper that looks like this. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold these, this part down, and then you have your slit there, you're gonna fold that back. And then burnish the edge. And then what you're gonna do is rotate it. And so you have your folded pieces here, you have an open piece here, and all, you have a flap here, you have your insert here and another flap. And so as you can see, we have an opened pocket. And so we need to close that off. <clears throat> and so what I've done for my, my mini album is I've done three different techniques. Um, one of them, I'll show you here, that I've done is, let's see, see I have a pocket here, then I have, so I have my flap right here, then I have my pocket here, which is right here. And I have a little, my insert here, my pocket here and a pocket here. So what I've done is I've closed off this pocket page by using a piece that measures five and five sixteenth by five inches. I've um, scored down the middle and then I've used a decorative punch um, for this one and I've used a die uh, cut for the mini album here. Um, the edges and what you're gonna do is you're gonna put some glue along here and along this edge and then you're just going to glue that on just like that and so you have your flap you have your insert here you have pockets and then another flap so what I've done I went ahead and magnetized those flaps closed but um, it would look really cute just to have it like that and you'll have it just a ton of pages so that's one option. Another option that I did in my mini album, as you can see here, this is my pocket page. I did not have a pocket here, but I have one here. And so what I did there was I cut a piece that measures maybe three inches by five and five sixteenths, since our pocket page is six by six. And then I scored down at half of an inch, did a decorative edge, whatever you wanna do. And so you can glue right down here, right down here, and then along your flap or use some score tape. I would not recommend score tape for your pockets. Otherwise your tags, when you insert them, might get stuck in that. So I like to use wet adhesive for my pockets um, like that. And then what you can do is you attach your pocket here and the other side here will close off your um, pocket insert right here. And then you can do whatever you want to do. I did contrasting cardstock so you can see what I'm doing. Um, you would probably use the same color cardstock. <clears throat> so that way you can do um, a plain page here and then you can have a pocket page here. And then your other option, which I did not use in this mini album, <clears throat> is just to use a 5 and 5 to 16 piece 
five and fifteen sixteenths inch piece, excuse me, by one inch, and then you score down at half an inch, and then you just um, you can use score tape on this one here and here, and then you just close off your pocket like that, and then you can do whatever you want to do with this page. Um, you can add a pocket later or what have you. So that is the pocket page, and I inserted it. Um, I bound my album using a like a hidden hinge type binding. Um, so this is where you would, so let's say I glued it here, glued my, my pocket closed, and then we have this opening here, the, the folded edges right here. That's where you're going to insert your pocket page onto your binding system. Just like that. Now for those that don't normally make mini albums like that and they uh, you like to use your bind it all or your cinch or you like to use um, these little rings to hold your mini album together um, you can still use this pocket page style all you're going to do is you're going to cut another piece of cardstock this one measures five and fifteenth sixteenths by two inches you score it down the middle at one inch so and then you double it up and then um, I use my bind it all and you can use whatever system you like to use or punch holes for your rings and then um, of course glue these together so the doubling up and the glue will nice uh, strengthen your piece and then you just insert your glued piece like this you're going to put some glue on this side and on this side and then you're just going to insert it in like this and then you're all set to add your rings and bind your album like that so it's a, a page style that anyone can use and it's super easy it gets you your fun interactive page really quickly um, so you can get on to all the fun stuff one last thing I want to say um, for my mini album I left all the pages the same size just like this um, you can also on the flaps do a decorative edge here which would look really cute and so it'd be a little shorter and you can see your page underneath and um, so people will know that there's something to flip there I use my tabs to let people know that that's where you can flip it but that would look really pretty to have a decorative edge um, there so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you enjoyed my projects. I'll show them to you one last time and I'll also include some photos um, at the end so you can look at them a little more closely. And um, thanks again for watching and good luck to all the finalists and see you guys around next time. Bye.